As of March 18th of 2024, there are currently 46 volcanoes which are actively erupting around the planet. One of these erupting volcanoes can be found within Central America, where it contains one of the planet's most acidic volcanic crater lakes. There, at Costa Rica's Poes volcano, is a crater lake which has a pH of negative 0.87. This lake is the site of highly frequent phreatic or phreatomagmatic eruptions which are generally small to medium in size. For example, in a 100-hour time span preceding March 12th, POAS produced more than 550 small phreatic explosions. And now, here are this week's top volcano-related news stories. In Russia, suspicious activity appears to be ongoing at the towering Mutnovsky volcano which last erupted 17 years ago. Meanwhile, in the Galapagos Islands, the eruption of the Fernandina volcano is still going strong, but has notably declined in intensity. And, in what is this week's top story, the strongest earthquake in 25 years struck underneath Italy's highly dangerous Mount Vesuvius volcano and occurred alongside a swarm of earthquakes. This fact might initially sound highly concerning given Vesuvius's history of large and highly lethal volcanic eruptions which have occurred during the last 10,000 years. For example, lethal eruptions occurred from Vesuvius most notably in 79 CE, but also 1641, 1794, 1906, and most recently in 1944. However, as a geologist, I am here to tell you that thankfully Vesuvius's latest activity is not a cause for concern. Every year, it is normal for Vesuvius to produce between 100 and 300 earthquakes, which every few years or so involves a magnitude 2 range earthquake which can be felt. Each of these larger quakes triggers smaller aftershocks underneath the volcano due to minute movements of its underlying hydrothermal system. One such larger but still small magnitude quake struck the northwestern slope of Mount Vesuvius on March 11 at 7.08 p.m. local time, registering in as a magnitude 3.0. This quake, which alarmed some residents near the volcano, was followed by approximately 13 aftershocks, which were all smaller in magnitude. These quakes were caused by the reactivation of fault lines underneath Vesuvius's edifice, but there is absolutely no indication that fresh magma was involved. I went out of my way to check for any signs of ground deformation in western Italy and found nothing at Vesuvius. As a result, in my opinion, based 0 to 10 volcanic unrest scale, I am keeping Vesuvius at an alert level of green and a rating of 0. Moving to Ecuador's Galapagos Islands, it is now day 15 of the ongoing eruption of the Fernandina Shield Volcano. In that time span, 8.1 square kilometers have been covered in 30 million cubic meters of lava, indicating an average lava flow thickness of 3.7 meters or 12.2 feet. While this eruption started out effusively producing lava at a rate of 165 cubic meters per second, it has since declined to between 15 and 25 cubic meters per second. While there were initially 20 simultaneously erupting fissures, there is now only one, but this still active vent has increased one lava lobe to 9 kilometers in length. However, as shown by the greatly decreasing amount of sulfur dioxide emissions, it is quite likely that in the next 1-2 to two weeks this eruption will end. These lava flows now seem quite unlikely to reach the ocean. In Russia, something appears to have changed at the remote Madnovsky volcano. Madnovsky is best known for its unusually extensive fumarole fields which not only regularly produce large volumes of sulfur dioxide every day, but have also emplaced more than 50 minerals, some of which are highly unique. These range from native gold, the cadmium mineral Tazifite, to the iodine mineral Madnovskite. Well, these fumaroles appear to be recently producing gas emissions at a rate above what is normal. On March 7th, this figure reached a notable high, creating a plume composed of 4,000 tons of sulfur dioxide gas. For comparison, the still erupting Fernandina volcano is only producing a fraction of these emissions. However, there is more. I ran a few satellite datasets checking for signs of ground deformation and appear to have found such a signal at Madnovsky, suggesting that around half a centimeter of uplift has recently occurred. While minor, it warrants further investigation as a magmatic intrusion might be underway. Here is a quick list of all the world's volcanoes which are currently erupting.
Additionally, here are some volcanoes showing signs of unrest which are not erupting as of the recording of this video on March 17th of 2024. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.